What is my connection to water? This is a question that I have asked myself over the past six years as I've been doing research into the material that we all commonly experience and call water. And I'd like to ask you today, what is your connection to water? Now this question actually didn't come from my research. This didn't come as some scientific inquiry. It was born a long time ago when I was working as a massage therapist. And in that practice, I would use a technique called craniosacral therapy, which maybe sounds a bit strange when I describe it. You sit with your client, your patient, and you hold their head for an hour very quietly, maybe asking them every so often, what do you notice? What do you feel? And lo and behold, after doing this for a couple of weeks with the person, Whatever malady they came in with, it could be uh, an ankle injury that has been bothering them for years, um, it could be bad back, it could be headaches, it could be menstrual cramps, it could be intestinal problems, these things would go away. These were people who had come down a long road of suffering, of dead ends, of medical doctors saying, yeah, don't know what's wrong with you, you're just not going to get better, so you better get used to it. And then just because I'm sitting there with them, present with them, and listening to what we were trained is the fluid motion that moves within all of us, that makes us alive, listening with my fingers, that somehow they got better. So what's going on? Now, originally, I had been trained as a biologist, so in my university studies, I studied plants and I studied biology. And I wanted to know, well, what's the scientific literature say about this? There has to have been some research on why people get better. And I went and I read through journal after journal after journal, and I talked to friends of mine who are doctors, naturopathic doctors, surgeons, other people who are also massage therapists, other people who are doing other types of, of healing work. And they also wondered that when you got past all of the trappings and all of the public presentation that we understand healing, there was this quiet admission that we didn't really know what was the difference between one person getting better and another person not. So doing what anyone would do in this situation, I went and took a walk because I needed some fresh air. I needed to get out of my, my uh, book studies and maybe look out into the world and see what there was. And I set off for Alaska. Uh, at the time, I was living in Seattle, so Alaska was just a short ferry ride away. And um, this journey turned into a three-month trek through the wilderness of Alaska. And water dominated the landscape. And it dominated my awareness because suddenly I was confronted with the same force I had been feeling in the people I was working with. I realized that this abstract concept that I had been trained to use to help people recover was not abstract at all. That it was actually really the truth, which is that we are water. Each and every one of us is water. It is our most abundant substance. And yet, we don't notice it. It's so entwined in us, we just forget that it's even there. We look at water in the outside world, we see a glass, we see a river, we see an ocean, we say water. But how often do we look at ourselves in the mirror and say, water? <laughs> Strange, right? Well, life is funny because when you get some awareness or you get a change in focus, things begin to shift. And so, I had gotten this glimpse, this question, what is my relationship to water? And answers would come. Answers would come very quickly. And they would be hard lessons. Um, a year after I returned, my father was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, unfortunately, even though I felt really passionate now to find the answer, he slipped away from us in just three weeks. In my grief, I turned my attention to the only thing that remained in that space, which was the question, 
Why do some people get better and others not? So life just works in mysterious ways, and soon I found myself on my way here to Leeuwarden, some town in the north of the Netherlands I had never even heard of. My Dutch friends back in Seattle said, oh, you're going, you're moving to the Netherlands, that's so great. Where are you going? Leeuwarden. <laughs> huh? <laughs> really? What's in Leeuwarden? Well, well, it turns out there was uh, something really special waiting for me. Um, a discovery that dates back to the age of the steam engine, 1893, 123 years ago. A researcher at the Cavendish Laboratory um, was studying the effects of electricity on water, and I would like to show you this experiment today. So here's just some chemically pure water. Hopefully the drains are closed. Yes, they're closed. And we're just going to fill these two wine glasses with chemically pure water to near the brim. Do, 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 do. <laughs> See, you know, that guy doing the pickpocket thing in the beginning was kind of fun. I was like, oh, cool, magic trick. Um, some might say this is magic, but uh, I assure you it's pure science. So we'll just bring them together. Whoops, wrong direction. Bring them together. So Sir William Armstrong, back in 1893, presented to the Newcastle Literary and Philosophical Society this very experiment. Turning on the voltage, in this case, 20,000 volts, which doesn't seem to want to work right now. Please pause for technical difficulties. Let's try again. It's gonna work. Aww. Please watch this video. Um, <laughs> Well, we find that a rope of water leaps up and forms between the two glasses. And I still don't know what's wrong with this thing. Huh. Interesting. See, usually the bridge gets shy in front of people, so this is not entirely unheard of for me. Here we go. Waiting, some sparks, and voila, you see the water leap up. So. You know, these videos, you see them on YouTube, um, and oftentimes in the comments people will say, oh yes, I know what After Effects, oops, it broke. I know what After Effects filter you need to use to make this thing happen. It's completely fake. It's not real. You can't really do this. I show you. I assure you, it's real. We have, <laughs> we have a fault again. Okay. One last time. We'll just keep it a short bridge, because apparently it's being shy today. All right. Great. So now, if we look at this bridge, a couple of things begin to happen, right? We see that when we stretch the bridge, it gets thinner. When we shorten it, it gets thicker. We can see it oscillate. It can vibrate like a guitar string. Um, I'll even show you. Hopefully, it won't break. But I can pass this glass rod right through the bridge. So pure magic. When we do chemical analysis, we find that the pH in the two glasses is different. So the acidity of the water changes. We find that it emits heat. So when we look with an infrared camera, the bridge is hot. But when we look at the spectrum of the light coming out, we find that there are features that have nothing to do with its temperature. When we take a common laser pointer and shine it into the bridge, rather than producing a straight line like we would expect for a cylindrical lens, the laser beam is scrambled. So something had to be going on at the molecular level. And we really wondered what this was. Now, liquid water is really hard stuff to study because one, water molecules are incredibly small. For example, each of you have in your bodies approximately a one with 26 zeros behind it. That's 100 trillion trillion water molecules. So to put that into perspective, if I take a, a stick about one meter long and place it end to end to end, and I do that with that number, 100 trillion trillion meter sticks, I will reach from one side of the universe to the other. That's how much water is in your bodies. Each and every one of us is incredibly wealthy. But what are we doing with that water? 
Are you thinking about the water that's in your body? Are you thinking about where it came from? Where it's been? Who else it's been inside? <laughs> it's kind of scary to think about, right? God, if some of the water I drink was in Donald Trump, oof. But water's not only really small, it's also incredibly fast. So water molecules have this funny thing. They like to stick to each other. And unlike uh, the bond that, say, holds my hand to my arm, the bonding between water molecules is more like holding hands with your friend. You can change it. You can reach out and say, hi. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you and do that a trillion times a second, and now you are a water molecule. So when we try to figure out what's going on in the bridge, we really have a difficult task. But fortunately, there have been a couple of lucky breaks for us and some really nice clues. And they have led us to understand water like this. So we are a DJ. We are able to play music. We can change the way the water molecules are moving. We can change the rhythm. If we play no music at all, they still will move around. But if we want to get the system excited, if we want to liven it up, we can turn on some, some good bass, right? We can get, yeah, let's get the party started, you know? We have a nice build up, build it up, build it up, yeah, 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 and then boom! <laughs> we get everyone excited, everyone's dancing together. Right? Their rhythms start to match. They're all jumping up and down. Right? We really get the whole stadium going here. Okay? <laughs> Woo! But then something happens. Some crazy guy gets in a hamster ball and starts running over the top <laughs> of the crowd. Crowd surfing 2016. It's the future of human transportation. <laughs> but it turns out that when we look in the water bridge, we see this. So you see these weird distortions, these objects moving along. When we look using very advanced techniques like X-ray and neutron scattering and super fast lasers, we find out that there are protons in there. Now protons are just positively charged hydrogen ions. And they are a special type of material because they're also the currency of life. They are the, the power source that each and every one of your cells uses to run its biochemical industry. So what's going on here? Why are there massive swarms of protons in the bridge? And what's even more puzzling is when we look at the bridge, right, we see that the water is flowing. It actually flows in both directions. And we can measure the speed. We can put particles in there. We can calculate the speed of the water flow. And these protons are moving 10 times faster then we have ever seen protons move in water. I'm sorry, that's not right. Four and a half times faster. And they're moving 10 times faster than the flow that's carrying them. So these protons are not normal protons. These are not your friend trying to get from the bar back up to the front of the stage with the drinks held up over his hand. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm going to get, yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. No, these protons are crowd surfers. They're in hamster balls and they're running. How does this happen? When we look at the data, what we find is that it is a collective oscillation. That in the water bridge, we, by applying this electric field, excite a huge population of water molecules. And then this special group of protons, this new population of protons, starts running over the top of it. Now you might say, OK, well, what's the meaning behind this? Well, it turns out that the electric fields that are present in our cells are the same strength as those in the bridge. So what we're seeing in the bridge is actually what's happening inside of our, inside of our bodies. And furthermore, when we stand at the edge of the ocean, we have to realize that these electric fields are throughout the ocean because salt ions also have very strong electric fields surrounding them. And there is a pathway. If you stand here at the edge of the sea, molecule by molecule reaching from where you are to every other point on the globe, regardless of where it is and regardless of whatever direction the water is flowing, 
be it downhill, be it over a waterfall. And this is important because this connectedness that water has inherently within it, I believe is part of why we as human beings feel a need to connect with each other. We are not doing this from some psychological need. We are doing this because our most abundant substance is connection. Water exists and behaves the way it does because of these connections, because of these hydrogen bridges or hydrogen bonds that link water molecule to water molecule. Water shapes life and life shapes water. This is an intimate process. Our bodies are born of water, not in the sense of plucking a pebble from a river, but in the sense that we are one with the material. Our proteins are folded by the hands, the myriad little hands of water molecules. Our DNA sits suspended in a web of water molecules. Our tissues, our organs are bathed in a complex chemistry whose tapestry is woven out of the fiber of water molecules. So water has this incredible power to magnify forces. Water is universal. It knows no borders. It accepts all. Water is life and life is water. And it seems that as we come closer to understanding the ability to control water and to program water to do tasks for us, we are entering a new era of human technology. An era when we will be able to make our technologies and the technologies of nature merge. A world where we can have peace, a world where we can share life, and a world where there's enough water for everyone. Thank you.